So you guys just can't get enough, can you? You guys want just when's the next short video coming out? Just you gotta give us another short video. You guys can't leave me hanging. Listen, listen. I'm gonna give you all another short video. Today is the day we talk about the advances. You guys got better, but today it's time to time to put on our big boy pants on for sure. It's time to put on our big boy pants on. We're talking about the advances here, right? And it's gonna be a lot more than just talking about zooming in and out and this and that. You're going to have to get your deep involved in this one. This is for chem reasons now. This is, you see the shit me and law do. We don't, we don't do it like any other short and deep. Okay. It's time to learn about communication. It's time to learn more about, you know, like just the mechanics of it. Not the mechanics of jumping higher than the other. I'm talking about latencies. I'm talking about jumping. I'm just everything, everything. All right. I'm, I'm kind of fibbing here. I don't want to fib in this video. I want to make it a little shorter. Right. But before we get into it, I got one message for y'all. So listen, I've been getting comments, DMs, spammed DMs. I'm talking about every single day about just how the hell do you zoom in and out of controller mid coverage? I'm going to tell you guys what it is, how to do it, how to use it. This is a game changer, a literal controller godsend. I'm telling you guys right now, this is by far one of the greatest things that's ever came out for the controller community in FF. So right here, we have the controller zoom and we also have the controller macro set. This is for the premium members, but I promise you it's worth it. This is the fastest setting. This is the slowest setting. Pretty sure I like it a little bit right here. You know, not too fast, not too slow. Say if I'm like, you know, covering someone's say, say Jake the buggy man right here is a sideline. I'm blocking the hell out of him. Matter of fact, I got my macro on. Boom, boom, boom. You see, there's no stutter when you're moving around. But here's the best part. See how I zoom out? I should make it boop, boop, boop. All right, boom. See how I zoom out so far? And like I said, I don't even got to move. Boom. Back in, back out, in, out, in, out. Just like your mom. <laughs> Anyways, not nah. real shit though. This is actually the best thing that's ever happened to me for a controller player playing short and an OG. Because if you're a deep, you don't really need a zoom in and out crazy like that. But if you're a short like me and maybe like you, this is a must. And it's actually the free version if you guys want to give it a shot. But the macro, you guys know I have the greatest jams. I don't even need a macro, baby. But just giving me a giving just a macro at short, are you fucking kidding me? If you guys want to have jams just like me, you have to get Roblox Flag Creator, the premium version. It is only five bucks and that's not all. There's plenty more, there's plenty more features, dog. As you can see right here, you can turn off textures, gray skies, controller reticle. I don't have it on right now, but you guys know I have a reticle all the time. You have a mid game FPS changer. I play on 60, but for any other game, this would be a charm. You can also change the key binds for your controller. Say if you don't like D-pad up and down, you guys want to use, you know, your claw player on your right hand. So you maybe want to do maybe triangle or square. You can do that. Controller macro, same thing. I have it on my LBL1. All you have to do, there's going to be a link down in the description that's going to take you right into the server and it gets you started. It's only five bucks for the premium version. The free version is cool too, but I promise you, if you want to elevate your game, this is like the best way to do it. All these videos that you're going to see today are all going to be used with the application, whether it's the macro or it's also the zoom in and out. It's all in there. So please enjoy this video. Let's get right back into it. Okay, so first we're going to be talking about communication. Uh, communications very important, especially with two uh, players that aren't really too fami familiar with each other's games. Me and Law have been playing short slash deep for almost about a year now. I think I'd safe to say about a year we've been playing together for like you know and like actual gameplay aspect. We've known each other for two years, but it's time that I show you guys this low key secret sauce that what me and him do that makes it a little bit tougher, a lot tougher actually, for a quarterback to just read what the hell is going to be the very next play. By no means is it always going to work every single time, but it 100% creates turnover worthy plays. So uh, I don't have the audio on because me, what me and him do, it's like second nature. I'm not trying to glaze this or anything like no real shit. I'm not trying to glaze. We, we're tuned in. Like if I tell him I'm going to hold the sideline, that's all I got to say. I'll drop. I'll tell him I'm going to drop. Then he tries to play hover over the sideline. It all depends. But here we go. We're going against a trap here. This is not playoffs, unfortunately. There's not really much great examples, but I have two great plays here. That's going to show you exactly what I mean. So right here, I'm guarding La Chicago. As you can see, I'm stuck on La Chicago. This sideline's not really burning at all. Best case scenario is that he just runs a comeback towards his sideline, which I what I always do is once they get past this first down marker, I kind of just pre-fire dropping it underneath. They could pre they could, the quarterback can just very much pre-fire this over top and hit the lob. That sometimes happens as well, but 
it's much easier to complete the pass under here than it is to complete the pass over top, especially when it's an initial PR. But anyways, I got Live Chicago right here. Seems like Law also has Jordan Mao right here, but he's wide open. Bobo is instead going to take Jordan Mao. And Law is going to have an option to either A, like what every other deep would do, play over top of this, and then have the short drop there. Or what well, me and Law got this down to a T is that I just play man on La Chicago right here. And then Law has a straight direction to drop down here. Sure, this is a wide open check down. It doesn't mean he's going to int it right away, especially if it's if this is going to be a trips first read. But this is going to be a great tackle. Drops right away. He almost makes it in right there anyway. But it's an amazing tackle for a four yard gain. Now, again, this is why a lot of people don't always like blame the short for not dropping this one. In reality, this is much easier because let's go back just a little bit. In reality, this is much more convenient. Law could, yes, drop on this right here or just play over top of this while Live Chicago is coming here. But let's say what happens if Live Chicago does end up going here, but then runs a comeback. I don't know why it's just doing these lines. Runs a comeback. Law's over top of this. He won't be able to get underneath this fast enough unless he pre-fires it, which no deep in their right mind would just do that. Whereas I could just play over top of Live Chicago here and just man him up and play even just a little more underneath since I already had a beat, all right? Lawton, easy check down. Let's say, like I said, he's technically closer to the check down than I am. This is a lot, this is a lot, you know, a lot more dangerous territory for me to just leave this and just hope to God that Law's looking at this rather than looking at this or that looking at Jordan Mouse comeback or rather looking at Jordan Mouse post in, right? So again, Bobo just hovers this over top. Law makes the drop right here. I stick on La Chicago. That's what's going to happen here. And then you just have Falcon playing over top of all this, Champ playing underneath that, and then obviously Worry playing over here. But again, drops right there. As you can see, I have La Chicago boxed up. Yes, Atrup does have the small window, but in every offense, especially in FF, windows are always going to be there. There's always going to be a window no matter what, damn near. But this is an amazing play by Law, and it forces them to a second down and 11. So this is also going to be very similar. I'm just going to let it play here. Live Chicago is getting jammed again. The Bailey just streaks up, comes back down. Here, Law makes some sort of decision, whether it's play on this back end zone, which he has to. He should. Champ just comes over here to try to tackle Kabaili. And again, I have an eyes on. So for the most part, Law sees Bobo's coming in to help him. Champ is playing on this underneath right here so that this isn't like, because this is basically two check downs, one and two right here. But Champ plays right there. Again, Law's in the same situation. Except this time, La Chicago's already in the back end zone. I'm just playing underneath this. This isn't going to get thrown on. So at that point, Law just has to make another decision. Either play right here on this back end zone to cut off Jordan Miles' back end zone, or again, drop for the tackle. And again, Law baits it. Perfect dive, another tackle. Now, again, the reason why communication is heavy on this is because there's always the deception that the short should always drop for the LOS. No, you don't always have to drop for the LOS. Red zone, you could you guys need to be a little more creative with this shit, bro. I understand I understand schemes are really really what stops the creativity from offense and defense, but this is just the way to go. The way let me let me just like here, let's go, let's go straight, let's go to the beginning. I'm going to tell Law here, okay, since we're inside the 20, this is red zone. I'll be like, Law, I'm going to stick this sideline, or I'm a man up the sideline. Feel free to drop. When I say that, Law's going to have, he's Law's going to feel free to drop. Bobo's going to hear that. Bobo's going to play more towards our side. MLB's going to hear that. MLB's going to play on that left side. And then the short left and deep left do their own thing, right? So again, I'm manning up the sideline. I'm not worried about this. I'm not worried because, like I said, Law knows. Law's just going to drop on that shit every chance that he gets. It creates turnover-worthy opportunities. Because he was the second earlier, that's a pick. No one expects a deep to just drop on that. Nobody. Again, same shit. I'm going to tell Law, I'm going to man it up again. It worked for one time, we're going to do it again, do it for another. 
Here we go again. Law playing over top of Kabali in case because there's no reason why LOS should just streak all the way up here for no reason. So it's great for him to stay cover, uh, stay on him for the full coverage. Again, baits it. And another great tackle. So that's really what communication is. Try to tell your deep to do a certain amount of things. A good example with um, if you're on the opponent's if you're sorry, if your opponent is on your five yard line, your 10 yard line, you can do the exact same thing. Be a little risky, be aggressive. Quarterbacks expect you guys to play conservative, be aggressive, change it up. That's all you got to do. So the next one here is about lurking. And you guys already know how I feel about lurking in the sense that it's a very controversial thing for a short especially if you're up and coming especially if you know if you want to be known as a good short you can't always be going for interceptions um usually you will not have those type of opportunities to be able to get an interception but there are many times also where you do get the interception it's just you won't be able to make those type of reads the deeps could because the deeps have a longer time again to make that play whereas the shorts it's now or never high risk high reward i understand but like i said in the last video if you haven't checked it out what are you doing but in the last video, I said that you do not want to take those type of risks. Just lock down as much as you can. But you're not here for that. So it's time for you guys to learn how to be able to lurk. And again, I do want to mention this is very like team based more than it is player based. This is why these are the advances. You're going to have to get your team involved in this. You're going to have your team. Your team needs to lob you up to be able to make these opportunities and vice versa. So... This is our game against E-Dreams. This happened literally a couple hours ago. But I had a really nice interception here with some great baiting. So off the ripper, I do want to give you some context. E-Dreams has been absolutely boxed. This guy hasn't even went to the trip to our own red zone at all. It was terrible. We all boxed him. But his main gains was this man right here, AQ. All he kept doing was slanting out, slanting in, or technically out, whatever. He's just slanting throughout the line. He has two slots, one, two right here. He has two sidelines that also technically do a four vert here. It's really just a check down, comeback offense, right? And so much so, he's been hitting the comeback. Uh, he's been in the check down so much so that Caleb is absolutely respecting it, right? So here you go. What are the slots here tend to come back? We have Abdo Stone coming back here towards this midfold. And there's no way in. Blue hell, CJ is going to be able to come back here. Law is going to have to play over top on Trizzy because it's going to be a little too little, little too late to try to get that. I'm pretty sure Falcon is uh, right above here as well because that's the slot that he was going to be, you know, held responsible for. But this is way too late for Law to make a comeback on, or sorry, make a read on. So this is the initial read, right? Now what I can do is I can cut down on here try to make this window a lot harder for him to throw because obviously if there's no one in front of if there's no, no one in front of e dreams what does that mean he can throw this bitch as low as possible so all, has, all abdo has to do is come up and attack it whereas if i was say right here he can't just throw that bitch underneath he can't throw that shit to where he has to attack it what he's gonna have to do is just gonna have to try to hit that bitch over top of me if i was right here let's just put my little stick figure ass right there like hey hello but you know you get what i'm saying so my body right here making one more stick figure be right here he's gonna have to try to hit that bitch over top and that means that since falcon's under behind that and laws pring this law can just take trizzy out of the play but whatever the fuck he goes he'll just follow right so again this is where windows comes in like i mentioned windows last video this is kind of where it comes in so this is what i do here i see that i go and try to commit it like i said i mentioned falcon's gonna be over top of that so again, I come back, I try to go a little bit more underneath because if he does end up throwing it, I have a better chance of actually positioning myself to attack it. But then Law is out of the screen because he's guarding Trizzy's slot and we're not that deep into the field just yet. So what I do here is I go basically boom and then right back up here because the Dreams is going to be like, oh yeah, he bit on this shit. This, is, this shit's bitched now. This is bitched. So he just bit on that. It's going to be hard for him to recover. Now watch this. Go there, right back over top. Free interception. Absolutely free interception. I'm gonna I want you guys to see this from the QB's perspective here. Again, you see, look how open this looks. This looks butt ass naked. This is very open. But again, 
he just thinks that I'm going to commit to it. Falcon had this pretty locked up from this perspective. Obviously, his perspective is a lot different. He looks over, over, like, over the entire field. But too little, too late. I'm able to... Is that a hittable pass, by the way? Yes, of course it is a hittable pass. But I made it just as hard because, like I said, he was comfortable in the fact that he thought I was going to commit to this right here. And that he could just underlead that bitch. And what did he do? He underled it. Because if he leads it more over top, then Law will be able to get there on time for interception. I understand this is kind of windows, but this time you're going to see my POV of me getting the lurk. Say if he did lead it over top. Yeah, he's going to have to try to get it, but he's going to hit that pretty perfect with pressure in his face and in his own end zone. So that's that, right? And I'm going to show you one more perspective here that I got for you guys. This is against Atrupt. Um... Another lurk, like I mentioned, this was a pretty hell of a game. I know we're up two digits, up two scores, but the thing was is that we were going blow for blow up until the fourth quarter, up until we actually just like, you know, we readjusted. And I I definitely readjusted. I was playing pretty, I wasn't playing like just until now, right? So here we are playing over top. This is also in the playoff game. I understand the first lesson was not a playoff game. I'm going to try to do all these playoff games as much as possible to give you guys good examples. With the highest on the gameplay so right here here's my here's my thought process All right, real quick no check down kabali's probably gonna run to the slant right there champ literally has no one to guard he's pretty much underneath all this shit and pretty much and it's too damn early for him to like throw a comeback anyways or call a comeback so champ has his eyes focused on kabali right again just like with dreams it's kind of like a four verts and then just a check down going left or right or whatever the hell may be. So, we're on an ISO again. This time, I know that Law, there's a free safety right over top of this, by the way. I know that Law will be able to pretty much play a little bit over top of my sideline. To where I, because Tubby's going to more than likely post outward. And the reason why I say more than likely post out is because, like I said, Falcon's right here in this middle. You see this little fat ass shadow, right? little big ass shot of the big person he is so he's probably gonna post that right which means law is gonna have that decent coverage over top of this what does that warrant that means law chicago is probably gonna run a comeback more than likely right remember it's all probability i can't guess the word. i can't guess everything so right here you see how i play on this uh, i thought that was La chicago it's maddox i don't know who that is but you see how i try to play on that those are underneath this could have been intercepted 100 percent but like I said, we're shorts. This is playoffs. It's the lead eight against a great quarterback. I want to I want to force it at 30 to 15. So that's exactly what we do. It ain't over. So right here, this time it's gonna be 30 and 15. I want you guys to understand most quarterbacks, right? I'm not saying every quarterback, unless it's butt booty naked, unless it's wide open by five to ten yards. They will not be going for anything crazy. This is VC play territory. This is gains territory, right? One of the two. It could be, it could be sideline in. It could be LOS slant in or out for just gains in general. Just dive back for the first, if not more. It could be slot comeback. It could be slot JP. It could be slot in out. You get what I mean, right? It could be anything. This is where you play your gaps here. Now watch this again. Falcon is absolutely pre PRing the top right here. Like, like <clears throat> excuse me, Jesus Christ. Falcon really likes to jump on one of these slots right here. He's more, more likely going to help this side since Champ is on that side, right? So let's watch. I'm on this check down. I'm on this, not check down, excuse me. I'm on this sideline very heavy, but again, Law's pretty much over top. Tubby's not going to go inwards on this on Falcon because, like I said, Falcon's going to be here. So he's more than likely, again, going to be posting outwards or going to be leaning towards this side over here right so again i feel comfortable with this coverage i decide that i decide excuse me <clears throat> again i readjusted i know that atrup has been throwing these slants and out to these los's the entire time has the mlb beat every single time so instead i leave my assignment to law yes he's going to probably be on an island if this isn't thrown we take the risk anyways we try to go for the high probability play and we try to cut this off right here we try to cut it off again give it a little bit of time see that it's a little he thinks it's a little too late at this point like again see 
See how they're going towards here? See how Allah's going towards here? I feel more than comfortable to drop on this. If he tries to pre-fire it, I'll still be able to like, oh, recover from here on out and then go back here, potentially getting a SWAT. I come there, he throws it when he sees champ disengage. I attack it and I get the interception. Hopefully I got the POV, I think I did, yeah. Again, from right here, from this perspective, again, you see how Law's leaning towards this side now because Tubby's posted outside right there. It's basically a pick your poison, and I just jump it. Simple as that. And it's very difficult for the LOS to attack this, especially when they want to catch it and dive backwards. But that's basically what it is right there for lurking. I hope you guys get a better understanding that lurking is very risky. I do not really condone it if you're trying to still be getting you know get up there as a player i do not expect you to get 10 ints a season i don't expect you to even get five ints a season i'd rather see 10 swats and 10 ints only because i know that you guys are actually locking shit down rather than trying to go for interceptions i have 12 ints in the season because how many targets i have 90 some targets off 52 completions allowed that's ridiculous but that's just me because my reputation is you know i have a great reputation even if i get 100 comps allowed on me I'm still considered one of the best, right? So I just go for stats. But you guys, just try to be a lockdown short. Be careful how you lurk because, like I said, right here, let's do. We, we can do prime examples. If I did, if I didn't attack, if I didn't expect this to be a comeback right here, say so he faked me out, he'd have so much more space. He'd have me burnt by like three to five yards. And a trump is a very capable quarterback of hitting this. Again, like I said, I know Law will be able to play post on the side since Tubby's kind of like leaning towards that way, but it's still a hittable pass, especially if I'm not there. This is risky. Again, similar to this. Right there from that point, again, Law, Law definitely, he's, he's one of the best deeps for a reason. He was going to he was gonna definitely help me out if this was pre-fired, but for the last part, let's say if Law did stick on this, you're not going to have a Law deep. You got to remember, you're not going to have a champ at MLB or a, or a Caleb at MLB. You're not going to have a Bandis, Pob, and Poopicide PE core to get them pushed back and pressured. You guys got to understand everything factors in, but if I were to, put, I were to drop, Law would be on him. This could be a pre-fire for a first down, and then that would be on you. Okay, just want to make that clear. Okay, so the last lesson for this video is just going to be about pre-firing. This one is a pretty tricky, I'd say a very tricky situation in terms of like, um, or not situation topic in terms of how I could explain this the best way possible. It's not that easy in terms of... Um, in terms of being able to guard it every single time because sometimes a quarterback is just at a better tee than you are sometimes you're at a better sink it just depends it's all about risky plays like i said this whole video is about being risky bro mr take that risk but we're gonna start it off here this game was against visuals this by the way <laughs> i have not been editing this video for like the past month i put it away to the side i have no idea why but we're back to it. i'm finishing it for this weekend so here we go we're going against visuals this is a great quarterback, great new quarterback. I'm jamming pulse right here. And then let me tell you what do you, let me tell you what I mean by pre-firing. Quarterback's read is since I'm in an ISO basically, because Jordan Miles is gonna try to play right here. Basically, I'm on an island between this and between this right here. Law, he can make a play right here if this is thrown over top. We already know this. We know this. If you guys watch my videos, we know this, right? But it's not guaranteed. Right, visuals can throw this a little more over here on this side. Maybe I might be able to get the play there, but law it's gonna be a little tougher. That's why he's gotta lead it overboard, or over top, not overboard. Sorry, it's like early in the morning, but that's where Windows comes in. You guys already know that. But this is what this is what core, not core. Sorry, this is what visuals is thinking. If Jordan's gonna go up top here, right? Free safety's already got this up top. Jeffrey can play on this right here. Law's very stuck on this. This is what makes Law. This is what makes Law and a lot of deeps like very able to make um plays to drop right there is because they stick so hard on this streak. And it looks like there's no way in God's given name he's just gonna do this. He pre-fires this as well, by the way. This is a great example for the deeps out there that's watching for no reason, right? But Visual's going to think that I'm going to drop right here and instead try to pre-fire me perfectly over top. Because if he pre-fires me, 
that means that he can throw this a little bit lower so that Lon won't be able to make the play here. You'll see what I mean. So watch. He expects me to drop, doesn't get the drop. You see, I don't even try to drop. I basically hover over him, though. See, I hover over him like that. That just gives him the indication that I'm in position to make the play rather than, you know, rather than doing this and then going up there. I do this to be hovered in with this right here. If it does get done, I can just dive for a tackle or a pick or whatever the case may be. But I also do this inside ship to also play on pulses inside as well. Early into the play, you guys know how you guys know I stress a lot about gaps. When it comes to the open field like this, the ends will most likely be on you because there's no reason a deep should just drop right on this end right here and just leave this streak wide the fuck open, whether there is free safety help or not. All right, so that's why I do this little curve right here. Protects the in and also gives me an easier access to this tack right there if the MLB's not there. That's why I love playing on ISOs. That's why I like to play by, like, you know, I just like to play on my own. Real shit. So, here we go. Again, he expects me to drop, so he tries to pre-fire this right here, right? I don't drop. I, I This is the thing. I drop. But I quote unquote I basically don't drop because I expect a lot of quarterbacks to prefer. That's what they're really they're really good for. You see how Law just plays on this damn near perfectly, right? This is a swatted play. I mean, low key, if I don't swat this, Law gets that all day, right? This just shows how good we are. Like this is just not easy to throw on. But that's what I mean by the prefires. I have another example this time with the interception, and this is gonna be the first time you guys can hear the audio, right? I gotta play aggressive here. You hear that? Yeah, I'm gonna, I gotta play aggressive here. It's fourth and one. 12, we're up by 12 points. Not too bad, but it's the fourth quarter with three minutes left. They score. They get a fourth and 25. They can milk that whole clock, depending, obviously, how quick they score in this drive. So, again. <laughs> I was saying by a millisecond, I got him. We gotta play, <clears throat> we gotta, I gotta play aggressive here. This could also be for the communications, but I, I kind of like this because I'm I typically pre-fired by call here, right? I'm going to play aggressive here. You're going to hear Falcon tell me he's going to PR over top so that I can drop and so can Fries. Right? Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to PR deep so you can look at drop. Do right here. Oops. Right here. We get I get one jam off, right? One jam off. And I do it on purpose. You guys know I can jam longer than that. But I get one jam off and then I immediately strike to the fucking side. I don't think I don't think twice. I don't go up. I don't do nothing. I immediately go to the side right there. Ryzen's hovering over top for maybe a potential JP, but he's a little too far back to read it. it. <laughs> Boom! I jump, basically jump into this, and it's a it's an interception right away. Those are very. Those are very very very. Like aggressive plays right there. So again. Play aggressive here. Play aggressive. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna PR deep so you can Falcon look at says he PR, he's PRing deep oh, on us, on our side, right? MLB's gonna be on the other side. Well, he's playing over here now. But we play on this shit immediately. So those are the three lessons. I know this third lesson was a little bit, you know, tricky, but at the same time, there's not really too much for me to explain to you guys the other, like, differences of what you can do better at short. The only thing I can do is explain to you already the lessons that I did teach you in a more depth detail. But... I'm not gonna lie, I just started yapping towards the end of the video, but if you guys enjoyed, please smash that subscribe button and that like button. I need as much subs and likes as possible so I can keep doing this and keep posting more consistently, bro. So please, if y'all haven't already showed love, please show some love. I will make an offensive video soon. I'm gonna make a YouTube short on offense, but the real offensive tutorial will be coming soon. Just get this video to let's say 75 likes because y'all brought y'all like up the score with likes. So 75 likes. I can do it for y'all. Alright, I'm out.